a big hello to you welcome back to the channel and i'm jennifer kirk welcoming you up here to weir yard and today it's a quick short video what we're going to be doing is going through some of the bargains that i picked up whilst i was away at the doncaster show over the weekend this is the british festival of railway modeling held every year at doncaster Racecourse, and uh, myself and iron horse railways were a last minute shoe in uh, one of the layouts decided they weren't going to come at the very last minute um, so we stepped in after we were asked and uh, filled the space a big hello to you welcome back to the channel it's so great to see you and oh, wait a minute i think i'm in somebody else's video here with Menneth Tatis and also the Four Seasons layout and Iron Horse Railways did a weathering uh, demonstration as well. But uh, of course it would be rude not to go and frisk the trade whilst we were there and both of us did just that and I was quite restrained actually but I thought I'd share with you some of the bits and pieces that I've picked up and uh, because people have asked in the past I will tell you exactly what I paid for these and uh, I was told that this was probably something that would be quite helpful for people to gauge just what sort of prices are out there so I do have the prices in the video but uh, come with me in association with Trainomatic makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. But as always, I'm really excited to show you the new pickups. And we've also got a few things that have turned up in the post as well. So let's take a good look. As you probably saw over the weekend, uh, I put out a post. I was at the BRM Festival of British Railway Modelling at Doncaster. Very last minute thing. I took the uh, Menneth Tatis layer and the Four Seasons one. But what I really, really like about exhibitions is the chance to frisk the trade. So I'm going to share with you some of the acquisitions. It would have been rude to not pick anything up. And first up, I got this from Hereford Model Centre. No, me bargains. But this is an as new second hand item. They had a few A4s on the stand. I did it actually a little bit on the first day. Really like the look of William uh, Whitelaw, which is 6004. But that one sold. They also had Dwight D. Eisenhower, but I've already got that. So for me, Wild Swan was the A4 that I picked up. I just find the end of the box there. 31-965 and uh, this is one of the A4s that I don't have so I don't know why I was getting a bit hung up on William Whitelaw because I could only really justify buying one A4. Um, so really you know they're both as good as each other. Uh, I paid £94.45 and it doesn't look like it's ever really been run. I've already DCC fitted it and I did that at the show and it's always really interesting when you sit there at a table and just DCC fit a locomotive uh, you look up and suddenly find you've got a crowd um, so perhaps that's a, 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 an interesting idea for manufacturers for uh, uh, retailers if you have a demonstration DCC fitting service then um, it really does draw a crowd and uh, as a trader perhaps that's something on a little table and draw people into your uh, your, your shop and uh, with that extra value added uh, thing you can sell quite a few decoders a lot of these locomotives so easy to DCC fit this one has an 8 pin decoder socket in the locomotive a uh, reasonable amount of space I had it DCC fitted uh, with a spare 8 pin that I had in just a matter of minutes but it's a lovely locomotive there's a little bit of lubricant leached out onto the cylinder covers but all in all really nice heavy locomotive this is the Backman version 
that I do like, that I will actively pick up. Uh, it's got that very strange rear uh, pony truck mechanism. This was the solution that Backman came up with to just avoid having acres of daylight. And she comes with the non-corridor tender. Now there's no pickups in the tender, very free running wheels. And you've just got that uh, pin with the bar across. So it does hamper possibly the locomotive a little bit in that the locomotive is only picking up from its own chassis, no additional uh, tender pickups. We've got a removable coal load, um, but uh, other, yeah, I can feel it moving. I'm not gonna pull it out. It's the non-corridor tender. Although interestingly enough, if you look there on the tender front, it's got the door for the tender corridor, but uh, no tender corridor in play. So I don't know whether that's Backman didn't tool up two tender fronts, uh, but certainly I don't mind. It's not really that noticeable. And I'm really glad to uh, be able to add this to my uh, A4 fleet. Now, moving on to some of the other bargains. Uh, I um, This is, technically wasn't a bargain. I've swapped with Iron Horse Railways my Class 17 in Ribble cement livery that he very kindly weathered an, uh, a while ago. And he just really, really wanted one of those locos. He'd sold his own, instantly regretted it. That's why I never really sell stuff, because the re regret often sets in very quickly. But um, I decided that I've already got a tops numbered uh, a Hellion 17 as uh, 17 so I decided actually I could uh, I could let her go and uh, she's gone to a good home it must be said so this was collected at the show and uh, Iron Horse Railways has done a little bit of upgrading you can see there we've got some wires going across so even though this is uh, a DCC socket in the locomotive itself, the socket's been moved into the tender. Uh, I have a feeling that Craig was gearing up to DCC sound fit it, never got round to that. Uh, but certainly, uh, I never had a collet goods in my collection, and now I do. It's got a big fat coupling at the front. I'm going to remove that, change it. Though it is in a NEM pocket, uh, we've got a... For some reason, a loose screw there. I need to uh, screw that in. The tender itself doesn't have a NEM pocket. A little bit peculiar, uh, but uh, it is a upgraded older tooling from Backman. But actually, quite like that. So uh, pleased to have that added to the collection. Now, having a rustle in my bag of goodies, I got this in. It looks like uh, it's never been run. This is one of the Batman Mark I sleeping cars. £25 I paid for this. And this came from Anorax Anonymous, uh, catalogue number 39-502. And I've talked about them a lot. They do shows, uh, don't have a website, and very much it's priced to sell, seriously priced to sell. There's no shelf queens on their stand. They're just there to shift the lot. And quite often you'll find the, the crowd three or four deep around uh, their stand and seriously if they're at an exhibition do go and have a good frisk and don't worry about um, like thinking oh well all the good bargains will have gone on the Saturday so what's going to be left on the Sunday well on Sunday morning and they put out fresh stock uh, because as you can imagine they've sold so much on the Saturday so they have stock for the Sunday and this actually came from what they were putting out on the morning. There was quite a lot of bits and pieces. And the reason I've gone for this is I had the uh, sleeping car in the old Hornby Double O range, which was in this livery. And it just, it just tugged on those nostalgia strings. Looking at the wheels, actually, it has run, but not really a huge amount. We've got the self-centering couplings. Everything is there, everything as it should be. And for £25, well, these would probably be in the Backman catalogue next time. At um, around the £50 mark would be my guess. So actually, that is a substantial reduction. And it just goes to show you can really pick up some great bargains. Also from Anorax Anonymous, 
I got myself another brake van. £14 as new in box. Again, uh, in this era where we are seeing new wagons hitting 30 to £40 now, including some of these very toolings, it's a great way to keep picking up the good stuff at shows uh, for these great, great prices. And you can see there, actually, these wheels, this has not been run. Um, so no idea what the backstory on it is. Pristine condition is the plywood side version. Now, back don't put out this version of the tooling all that off often. And um, I think I've only ever seen one other. Well, certainly I've only got one other with this uh, smooth plywood side tooling. So it's nice to see that they comparatively recently reissued it with the TOX code CAO, meaning it doesn't have any train brakes or through pipes. And uh, that's certainly well within my wheelhouse. And for £14, uh, quite frankly, you can't be robbed at that. So I was very, very pleased to pick that up. Now, the last item that I bought, again, Final one from Anorax Anonymous, and if you're thinking, well, she bought an awful lot from there. Well, yeah, um, there we are. Special edition Gronk, £69, and this is 32-110Z, the class 08 diesel shunter D3052, in the BR Black Early Emblem, factory weathered, and this was an exclusive for Model Rail. And uh, again, this is another one that I DCC fitted at the show and uh, really remarkably easy to do. So this is now all set up to run here on Weir Yard. And it's a Gronk livery that I didn't already have. Now I do have an extensive uh, back catalogue of Gronks, but this particular livery is one which has escaped me. And uh, I just quite like the look of it. I saw it early on the Saturday and thought, I'm having that and uh, really don't regret it. It runs lovely. It had it running on the Four Seasons layout uh, on the Sunday and um, really quite taken to it. I just quite like this livery, um, but I'm not really a huge uh, fan of the earlier uh, BR liveries, but in this case, the, the, the this livery on the, on the Gronk actually I think looked really, really good. We've got the sprung buffers and uh, the factory weathering's not overdone, actually just really... Um, mutes down the livery on, on this and uh, just quite like it. So really, really pleased to have another Gronk in the collection. Uh, there, there were a few other bits that I did buy, but um, really this was just a DCC decoders. And it's one of the things that when you're at shows, you do need to stock up with stuff like this. Got myself a curly cord, always really, really useful. And one final decoder, and one thing I would say to you, at the moment with the processor shortage, a lot of decoders really, really tough to find in stock. And uh, there is a low stock warning now from DCC Concepts for certainly for the next 18 decoders. And we've got a lot of new locomotives coming through, including the Robinson A5 locomotive from Rails and Sonic Models. They all need a next 18 decoder. And I will say to you that DCC concepts, I would expect them to be sold out within a couple of weeks. And there's no real sign of new processors coming through available to make new uh, decoders. So if you do see out there uh, decoders, it's probably good to get a few into stock like I have done, because otherwise when you really need them, they might not be out there. But Enough about uh, processor shortages. Here is my haul from Doncaster. And I'd love to hear from you. What do you think to what I picked up? Were the prices good? Indeed, were you at the Doncaster show? And did you pick up some amazing bargains? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. And um, it's always fun to just trade uh, stories of what you found, where you got it from, great prices. And certainly, what are your thoughts on whether exhibitions are still worth going to? Uh, certainly, not just for seeing the layouts that are there on display, but what did you think about the displays? What did you think about the demonstrations? And what did you think about the prices on the trade and the availability? Is it Monday? 
No. Oh, well, time for Mailbag Monday then. In this week's Mailbag Monday, I'd like to thank Roger Windsor, who very, very kindly sent a couple of his scratch-built buildings into the channel. He also sent Les Cliff a couple too, and we're incredibly grateful for these amazing works of art. Now, this particular one here is a thatched cottage, and the level of detail on this is just, quite frankly, incredible. We've got uh, even leaded style windows in there, some very, very ornate half timbering. The brickwork is superb. And the thatch too is it's actually made from a real material, possibly plumber's hemp or something like that. But the uh, actual detail that has gone into this is incredible. And it was um, a little bit dusty when it arrived, but very, very easy to just uh, wipe off with a uh, soft bristled brush. And certainly this is a model of a standard that I personally couldn't hope to build myself. It really is amazing. There's a couple of little marks on it, just a little bit of chip on the stonework for the chimney there, but otherwise this is in remarkably good condition. And we've also got some holes in the underneath, which um, actually would be quite useful to poke up some lights into this building and get it all lit up. Now, I don't have an immediate place on Weir Yard uh, for this, although I will bear it in mind for any developments. Uh, but it's probably more likely to go on to a new build layout. And certainly as a building focal point, this really is quite amazing. So thank you so much for your generosity in uh, sending this in to the channel. There was a second building as well, which is this little tiny hut. And I love this. This is actually perfect for the TMD area on Weir Yard, and it will be finding its forever home there. So I'm really, really grateful again to you, Roger, for sending this in. Again, scratch built and done to a very, very high standard. It's already painted and weathered, and this brickwork detail with this slightly more blue brickwork is really quite exquisite. Again, we've got these uh, quite complicated built-up windows. They're not a one-piece printed piece of plastic. They're actually made from tiny bits of, uh, I'm guessing, either wood or plastic strip that's been used to make the bars in these windows. And with these big ones at the front, actually, it does give quite a nice view inside. And my thoughts are to maybe cut a small hole to allow access through and uh, put some lights into this. Again, we've got the gutters and downpipes there, all separately built up pieces. There is so much detail on this. And I even like the, the dropped slate on the roof there, just as a, a tiny little detail, which just adds a little bit of character to the building. It's already weathered. The only thing that this is lacking is it's missing its chimney pot, but that's definitely something that either with uh, a piece of um, plastic tubing or maybe even wooden doweling, I can very easily make up a chimney pot. And certainly, other than that, this building is in great condition. So thank you so much to Roger Windsor, who's uh, donated these for use on Weir Yard and other projects that I'm building. And certainly, this is definitely going straight on to Weir Yard. I've got exactly the right place in mind. The next item that I want to show you here on Mailbag Monday is Figgly Wiggly. Oh yes, a big huge thanks to 3B Rail, who actually found this in a thrift store in Fort Lauderdale and knew that I really love Figgly Wiggly, Piggly Biggly Wiggly. And I can't believe it, they found one mint in box. This is really, really impressive. And uh, I'm gonna plug it in. Uh, they sent over the power for it as well. And quite helpfully, uh, we've got um, a little hole in the box for where you plug in the power. There we go. Biggly wiggly. Oh, that is just amazing. Uh, now, 3B Rail said that they weren't entirely sure whether those Gs are meant to um, not light up or whether they're uh, just maybe a loose wire inside. But certainly it's very reminiscent to me of uh, 
a, a lot of these signs where there's a letter or two which has stopped working. So I actually quite like it like that. It gives it a bit of individuality. And you can see the depth there inside the model with all of that detailed interior and all the figures on the sidewalk outside. That is just incredible. I love the Piggly Wiggly. So thank you so much, 3B Rail. That is incredible. Final item for Mailbag Monday, we've got a Graham Farish item. This is something that the Cupboard Bunkie has picked up. So we're going to show you it in uh, this little segment. I'm going to actually take the, the tissue paper off. And this is a bit of a peculiar one. And uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but essentially, this is an as-new Gronk in uh, N-Gage but without its motor or wheels. Uh, the Cover Monkey picked this up really super cheap. It's got all the screws, everything. But as you can see, oops, uh, brake rigging's are all there. We've got the running plate. We've got the body in this very, very ornate Network Southeast livery. This is either the engine, later went on to be uh, an RTC locomotive. And actually, in 00, I've got this in RTC livery. It was actually quite a recent uh, acquisition. Um, but yeah, that's weird. Somebody's just sort of taken the motor and wheels out and left everything else. And I'm not quite sure why anybody would want to do that to such a lovely locomotive. But the Cupboard Monkey's only paid a few pounds for this. So um, I've been tasked with looking out for a chassis for it. I did look at Doncaster, but didn't find an 08 chassis to fit into all of this. In fact, I'm not entirely sure how it all fits together because this is the, the running plate for it and um, it's all taken off. It's really quite strange. But there we go, a little uh, gronk it up for the cupboard monkey. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And a huge thank you to all the people who sent stuff into the channel. And piggly wiggly, piggly wiggly, 3B Rail, you are a legend finding that piggly wiggly. Ah! I also shared with you some of the bargain pickups from the BRM Doncaster show. And what did you think of those? Did I get a good bargain price on those? Or uh, maybe there was something you found whilst you were there at the show. What did you get? What goodies did you pick up? I always love to hear from you guys. And certainly I saw a lot of other things which I ummed and ahed on, but I had to really kind of rein myself in. But um, please, please, please tell me what you may have picked up uh, in the comment section down below. And let me know what you thought about the exhibition too. Was it a good choice of layouts? Was the trade there pretty good? And do you think that there is a good future for exhibitions? Really would love to hear from you. Certainly you may have seen on social media, people have been sharing photographs of the queue going round the block to get in on the Saturday. And uh, certainly you did have to have very sharp elbows to move around. Certainly where the uh, bargains were, they were many, many people deep. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. And uh, please, please, please check out the merch store down below. And you can also check us out over on Patreon. But happy modelling, great bargain hunting, wiggly wiggly. And until next time, take care. Bye for now. Wiggly oh. wiggly. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself.
I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.